Hello, I'm Peter Harrop, Chairman of ID TechX, and um, I'm very excited because we're going to interview George Bai, who is legendary, in my opinion, in the uh, aviation field. I've listened to him at aviation conferences many times, and uh, he has a, a remarkable story he's just told us in his presentation uh, of a single propeller aircraft having multiple benefits. Can you fill us in a bit, George? Oh, I'm, be I'm happy to, Peter. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm, I'm honored to be here. The, the, the Sunflyer is an electric propulsion airplane. And, of course, we're using the very latest batteries and, and, and motor. But the, the key thing about the Sunflyer is that it's reducing the, the operating cost it transforms an industry, perhaps even disrupts an industry because that operating cost is so low. About three dollars per flight hour compared to a, a Cessna 172 which is maybe forty five, fifty dollars per flight hour. But the program has advanced nicely. Uh, we're doing some ground testing. Uh, just recently we, we finished that. We're getting ready to, to, to fly the airplane so it's a very exciting time for the, for the program. That's wonderful. You were telling us that uh, pilot training is such a huge thing. I remember in the past you used to say that you could perhaps save uh, $100,000 of aviation fuel in training a pilot, and you were moving Indeed. that forward today with your story. Indeed. So uh, most pilots trained in the U.S. I was interested, but that's not necessarily going to be true in future. Yeah, we don't see that. Uh, it's certainly the case today, but we don't see that as much for the for the future. As electric aviation doesn't require the the logistics, uh, the support with fuel, the fuel farms, and the import of this uh, e expensive leaded aviation gasoline. Mm -hmm. So having the uh, electric availability allows electric aviation and. Of course, it can be much more widespread uh, because it doesn't have that limitation. And uh, in electric vehicles, land, water, and air, there has been traditionally for the pure electric vehicles that you're talking about, yes. quite a worry about the range, call it duration in the aviation <laughs> field. And uh, we do worry about hearing of these sort of, uh, call it manned drones, these things with lifters that might need a megawatt to take off. They seem to have a duration of only 20 minutes or half an hour. I can't imagine that city authorities are going to even allow them to fly over. But you're going right to the other end. You're moving Indeed. the envelope further, as far as I can see, uh, than anyone else. Uh, am I right to understand three hours duration? Indeed, uh, plus, plus the reserve. Ah. On top of that, ah, and and the and the key there is that, of course, as an airplane and as a certified airplane, I have much more battery capacity. I've yes. got a full three hours of battery capacity, and of course, as an airplane, my my lift equation, the physics of flying, is much much more efficient than the direct high intensity thrust required for a VTOL. Yeah, indeed, so, absolutely. So I, I have yeah. a much easier yeah, equation to solve. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I, I suppose there can be a roadmap further forward as well, because we're. Uh, I, I remember you talking about um, the types of battery we're using. It's a very similar story to the story in cars. There, there are only a very few number, of, small number of manufacturers, and you are using them the same as the indeed. car people, because you have to be very careful about the other two or three hundred who are in back streets making dirty, literally, in not clean conditions, uh, unsafe batteries sometimes. Um, but um, in your moving that forward, you've got the prospect, of course, of uh, greater energy density from these fabulous companies that are leading the battery field. But you told us a little about uh, propellers going backwards and uh, solar wings, so there is a roadmap to go even further from energy harvesting, shall we call it, regeneration. Electric aviation allows very efficient use of, of, of energy and the ability to recapture it. When we're taxiing the airplane, the Sunflyer, and we come to a stop at a taxiway, the motor stops. There's no idle, if you will. Yeah. When we fly, we climb, accelerate, and cruise, we're, of course, consuming energy. But what's interesting is the motor becomes a generator when we decelerate 
or descent. Beautiful. So it's it's a wonderful recapture of the energy that, that has been created as we accelerate and climb back going downhill, just like a hybrid car or electric mm. car. Mm. Well, we've heard with uh, construction machines and the like, they have uh, an incentive way beyond cost of uh, being able to work over longer hours, like a construction machine in the middle of a city is typically allowed to work only for about four hours because it's so disruptive and uh, they dream of having them day and night. Now there's some sort of equivalent there with you, isn't there? If there's lots of residential buildings around uh, an air, uh, airstrip, you might be allowed longer hours? Indeed. Ah. In fact, uh, in Europe particularly, mm. there are noise restrictions for training operations. Conventional airplanes are quite noisy. Mm. The uh, internal combustion engines are, are quite noisy. Mm. Electric, almost silent. We did some testing with the National Park Service in the US and at 500 feet overhead you could not perceive the airplane and it was wonderful. Wow. No noise, mm. no pollution. Yeah. What yeah. a great solution. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. And do you uh, have any interest in the charging of your aircraft on the ground um, with green technology? I mean, would you supply solar panels or a little solar hangar? Are you in that? The, the, the possibility of electric aviation, I think, also creates support industry. Mm. Uh, now we're not ourselves in um, the building of the hangars and, and solar panels for hangars mm. and things, but what a wonderful connection yeah, yeah, of, yeah, of different yeah, industries yeah. coming together. Yeah. A, a, an airport could be entirely off-grid. Yes, yes. A future airport entirely yeah. off-grid. Yeah. What an amazing possibility. Yeah, uh, that's amazing. Yes, we've written one or two reports recently about people moving off-grid, uh, both buildings and uh, cities and the rest, and uh, it seems to be a trend now to get off-grid, to get better security of supply, lower Indeed. costs, more control, Safety. and yeah. also transportability. You can move your equipment, if you wish, to some better place. But um, could we perhaps round off, I'll be challenging, uh, 10 years from now, uh, we're understanding you're actually facing into a market, even for this one model of aircraft, uh, that, uh, that could be um, in the billions of dollars level worldwide. Um, Indeed. So in 10 years time, things all going well. Um, m might you have longer range and lower prices and a bigger market or Indeed. A, can you give me a dream? Give me yes, a dream. Yes, uh, of course, <laughs> of course. So, you know, we're here today because we've tracked these technology trends. Battery energy density making possible today, just now, three hours of flight time. But of course, batteries are evolving quickly and, and, and what a great thing. Mm. And of course, on an airplane, if I design it well, I design the replaceability of the cells, not the modules, not the motor controller and so forth, but I can upgrade my airplane mm. and its flight time by replacing the battery cells within the modules inside the uh, energy saving or energy fuel tank, if you will. So five years from now, 10 years from now, instead of a three hour airplane, I have a five hour airplane. Instead of a relatively uh, slow, efficient cruise, I can fly even faster. So as we go forward, the price goes down, the range goes up, and we have an even better solution. That's really interesting. Actually, I'll be cheeky. I could ask questions all day, but I'm going to ask just one detailed one. On the motors, we've noticed that, uh, that there's uh, the original Faraday type of uh, axial flux motor it gives you a sort of pancake-shaped motor, and some of those have been used, I think, within a propeller, or, or uh, they're used in the Makani huge aeroplane that generates wind energy and a uh, British company makes those apparently. So there, there's, there is of course the Siemens 5 kilowatt per kilogram and that's for electric aircraft mm -hmm. like yours and then beyond that there are people at least claiming anything up to 10, 15 kilowatts per kilogram. Do you see something there that. for you? Uh, yeah, we've seen, uh, we're in that same range mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course it's the powered electronics as well. Yeah, absolutely. So the, yes, the motor yes, controller yes, inverter yes. 
you know, previously the size of a, of a large briefcase. Yep, yep. And, and now it's, uh, you know, a couple of decks of cards yeah. in size and weight. So that's saving weight. It's also a lot of thermal energy, yeah. a lot of heat yeah. that we don't have to uh, work with as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just motors. It's not just battery energy density. It's also the powered electronics yeah. that accompany it. So yeah. the, d the direction, the technology trends are wonderful. Mm. And mm. we'll be building on the baseline airplane and, and getting better every year as we go forward. And just simple things like getting rid of water cooling for motors oh or batteries or whatever is Indeed. reducing failure modes, reducing moving parts, reducing weight, reducing space. Uh, a long, a long, long journey to go. You are the most future-proof person I've ever met. <laughs> thank you well, so thank much. Well, thank you so it's much. It's really Peter. exciting. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure. We'll follow you in the years to come. Indeed. Thank you.